Richard, I've got a question for you. Yeah. OK, my question for you is, do you follow the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, on Twitter? I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> same. Exactly the same. Yeah. I log off and I go, ah, I didn't follow I him know. again. Another yeah. day. Well, look, you will, you, then you will have missed this because somehow the president's posts seemed to make even less sense than usual because this morning Trump retweeted a post that had a picture of him along with the caption, saw not fat trending and totally thought it was something Trump said. <laughs> now, I've no idea why Trump would retweet that. I'm not even really sure what that tweet means. All I know is that the President of the United States saw it and thought, during a pandemic, while wildfires are raging throughout California, I have to share this with the American people. <laughs> now, Trump wasn't even tagged in this tweet, which means that Trump searched his <laughs> own name <laughs> to find the tweet. Just how far <laughs> down the insecure vanity search well does Trump go every day? This is not the behaviour of a world leader. This is, frankly, the behaviour of a late-night talk show host. <laughs> can we look at this? Can we see the tweet again? This brings up another question for me. Why do Americans... Why do you Americans not button a polo shirt all the way up? Because Brits... I have a problem with that. Yes, because you're a full button. Yes. You're a full button, Always. but I don't consider you American. Oh, thank you very much. I consider you a citizen of the world. Thank you. <laughs> if you've watched a carpool video, you'll know I'm all buttons. Americans, they always <laughs> leave one, sometimes two, occasionally three. <laughs> I'm done. What's that about, Ian? You're not a full button guy. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's male cleavage, you know? <laughs> you gotta put, you got to put the vibe out a little bit. No, hang on. I have to talk to you about this. I've just noticed your chain. What's happened here? A rocket chain. I'm actually wearing three chains, if you really want to get into it. Because two chains, people will confuse you with the rapper. They confuse me with the rapper. Two chains, and I can't have that. So I've, I've decided to go with three chains. So you've gone with three chains, but yeah. just one chain out and two chains under. Why? Why are the other two such a surprise? Well, you do this one, and then, you know, it, it takes the eye up the neck, and then they <laughs> see two more chains. <laughs> And then the wheel starts spinning, what else is under there? <laughs> Ooh! Ow! I would love it if from this moment onwards you just keep adding chains. <laughs> Until, like, by, by Christmas we look over and you're just full Mr. T. Mr. Oh, T. Full chains the whole way and we never mention it. I pity the fool. But here's the thing. So this tweet, nobody knows why Trump retweeted it, not even the guy who wrote the tweet, because after seeing the president retweeted his post, he posted, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> i got to say, sorry, man, you're not allowed to be confused. Trump retweeted you, you are now the Secretary of Agriculture. <laughs> Those are the rules. <laughs> but Trump's confusing tweets didn't stop there. This morning, completely out of the blue, he tweeted about North Korea's supreme leader. He tweeted, Kim Jong-un is in good health. Never underestimate him. <laughs> what? And if there's one thing we learned this week is that Donald Trump would never, ever mislead us when it comes to issues of people's health. <laughs> also, who's underestimating him? <laughs> He's a ruthless dictator who likes to randomly fire off missiles and hang out with Dennis Rodman. Honestly, I think I estimate him the exact right amount. <laughs> I mean, Reg, do you consider yourself? Do you underestimate Kim Jong Un? I don't, I don't think I have. I've been pretty good at my estimation. You're pretty bang on in the estimation. Yeah. Ian, where do you stand on estimating Kim Jong Un? Oh hell no! I would never underestimate him. That's like that's like forgetting about Dre. You just don't do it. You don't do it. <laughs> you don't do it. And you know what? And you're absolutely right. I have that song. I'll honestly say I've never forgotten about Dre. Because, you know, people want to talk. They, yeah, like they got something to say, but, but nothing comes out. It's just gibberish. When they move their lips, it's just gibberish. You know, <laughs> and then... <laughs> forgot about Trump. <laughs> 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 but Trump has been strangely obsessed with Kim Jong-un for a while, and according to new details from journalist Bob Woodward's upcoming book, Trump bragged about a series of flattering letters that he and Kim Jong-un sent back and forth to each other. Apparently, Kim wrote that their relationship was like, quote, 
a fantasy film. <laughs> and that's a movie I do not want to see. <laughs> But what's going on? They're writing each other letters. This isn't a fantasy movie. This is The Notebook. <laughs> Trump also compared his chemistry with Kim Jong-un to the romantic feeling he gets with a woman, saying, quote, and this is 100% real, you meet a woman, in one second you know whether or not it's going to happen. It doesn't take you 10 minutes and it doesn't take you six weeks. It's like, whoa, OK, you know? It takes somewhat less than a second. I cannot stress this enough, he's talking about Kim Jong-un. Wow. Trump's like, it's so weird. I heard about Kim's forced labor camps and government propaganda campaigns, but it's, you know, he gets me, you know? <laughs> but Trump knows relationship chemistry, he does. Just look at all the chemistry between him and Melania. <laughs> oh, man. Meanwhile, they've just held a primary election in New Hampshire, and after a woman was told that she couldn't wear an anti-Trump shirt into her polling place, she just did the next best thing. She removed her shirt and went in and voted topless. Yes! Yeah, she was done in a flash. <laughs> Sleep tight, everyone. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> but it was a historic moment. It was the first time polling workers insisted on giving someone two I voted stickers. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> what are we, five minutes in? Susan's first laugh. <laughs> Not even the chains. You got nothing from Susan on the chains. Nothing. Now, and finally, did you guys see this? This is odd. Apparently, uh, big story out today, dozens of Amazon's own original products made for their Amazon Basics line of electronics have been bursting into flames. Yes. Yeah, but... Free shipping if you've got Prime, so you've got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of Kindle Fire, but this is ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, you get it, right? Ooh, you get it? <laughs> Hagar, you get it, right? Because Kindle Fire... <laughs> the product's been bursting into flames. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. You get it. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> Rob, you get it. Oh, yeah. Kindle, Amazon products, fire, flames. Don't ruin it. You just say you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't suck the air out of it. Just, Lauren, you get it. Was it your joke? No. no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it was mine. I wrote it all on my own. Because mm. what I was doing, I was up in the office and I thought, I was in the office and I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm typing away. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought Amazon have been, the products have been bursting into flames. Let me have a look and see what other products Amazon do. And I saw the Kindle fire and I was like, poof, <laughs> done. I stopped then, went out for lunch. Here's how you know the item could be dangerous. On the product page, Amazon tells you that customers who've bought this have also bought this. <laughs>